All right, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Racha HaKodash, Lavalam Yom, but Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father, who the world only calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the true name of the Lord and Savior of, of the nation of Israel, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. All right. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who teach and were well in these last days and who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel. I want to give a strong shalom to the Akim and the word Akim, meaning, meaning brothers. All right. Um, push this word of truth and sincerity on the four corners of the earth, making the calling less than sure. Um, and I want to give a humble salutation to the hopeful elect from the end of the four corners of the earth, whatever habitation may be at. All right. This is Brother Mashal. Uh, come back at you with a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. I want to say, the water, meaning thank you in the, in the ancient uh, Paleo Hebrew. All right, the water, Yahweh, Baha Shimi, Shah, for giving the spirit to do this lesson. And um, I'm going to do, a, you know, a, a, probably a new series, you know, I'll probably make a, 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 a video a week about this subject. But you know, just going back to the basics, man, you know what I'm saying? The Most High is waking people up, you know, in droves, man, you know what I'm saying? So us as brothers, us as, uh, you know, uh, teachers, you know what I'm saying, have to, you know, go back to the basics, man, because, you know, everybody that's, that's watching isn't, you know, four or five years in, man, you know what I'm saying, two, three, you know, what, however, however many years is in, you know what I mean, so you got, you got people waking up every day, man, coming out of uh, Christianity and coming out of Islam, you know, coming out of e Egyptology, man, waking up to the truth, you know, so that's a beautiful thing, man, you know, so as us as teachers, you know, uh, you know what, let's, uh, first, I'm going to start, before I start off with the lesson, Let's start off in uh, um, John 3, and uh, let's start at verse 1. It says, uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahweh by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from the Heavenly Father. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except the Most High be with him. Yahweh shall answer the sentence to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. All right? So Yahweh Shai is, is the true name of Jesus. Okay? And Jesus is just a transliteration of the Greek word Iesus. All right? And I'll explain this in a second. All right? So uh, Jesus' real name in the Paleo-Hebrew tongue is Yahweh Shai, all right? Because when you, uh, you know, real quick, let me go to um, Hebrews uh, 7 and 14. It says, uh, for it's evident that our Lord and our Lord is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, okay? For it is evident, meaning that it's apparent, it's um, proven, okay? That our Lord sprang out of Judah, the one of the 12 tribes. Of which Moses of uh, Slaki, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Okay, so Judah is one of the one of the twelve tribes of of Israel. Okay, you got you have uh, you can read uh, all the uh, Jacob's sons in um, you know uh, Genesis forty nine. Okay, but our Lord Yahweh Shah, who the world really calls Jesus Christ, sprang out of Judah. So in Judah. And the rest of the 12 tribes are Hebrews. So all the men and all the women and all the children will have Hebrew names. And Jesus is not a Hebrew name. Jesus is a transliteration of the word Iesus. Okay? So we're going to keep that in mind. So it says, um, Yahweh shall I answer and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the heavenly father. All right, it says, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahweh shall answer, a slack of Yahweh shall answer, verily, verily, I said unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven or to the kingdom of the most high. All right. So you have to be born again, man. You know, you have to be, you know, in the, the characteristics of a baby is, you know, they're, um, they learn everything from their parents okay so when so spiritually when we're born again we have to we have to drop everything that we learn 
We have to drop everything that we learned in, in, uh, from our parents. We have to drop everything that we learned from our pastor, you know, and we have to understand the, the, the spiritual aspect of the scriptures and what the scriptures are, are trying to portray. All right. So we have to be born again. We have to be we we have to be willing to learn. We have to be willing to become a student. You know why? Because Yahweh Shai, he was a student. He was a student uh, under under Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, who the Word and he calls God. Okay? You know, Paul had to be uh, uh, retaught, come back as a newborn babe. And he was taught directly by Yahweh Shai himself. Okay? The apostles. You know, the apostles was taught by Yahweh Shai. They had to come back as a newborn babe. Okay, so all of us have to be has to be reborn again, and it's not by water. You don't just dip yourself in water, and now you're a new person, and that's you're still doing wickedness. You know, real quick. Um, uh, what do I want to get? Um, oh yeah, Ephesians. Ephesians 5 and 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with washing of water by what? By the word. Okay. So the word is, is water. We were, now we're born again by the word or by the correct understanding. Okay. So when you come into this, you have to drop everything that you used to know, you know, and you come back and you're baptized by what? By you being sanctified and cleansed. With washing of water by the word. You're being born, you're being washed clean by the word because Yahweh Shai is the word. Okay? Now let's, uh, we can get into the, uh, we can get into the topic. And let's start at, um, Acts 4. And 12. I'm going to set up a little bit. Um, we're going to start at Acts uh, 4 and verse 10, okay, because uh, this lesson, uh, this first installment will be the name, okay, the name is, is very important, man, because we've been taught to be, to call on a uh, God, call on Jesus, when just because we see the word Jesus here, we don't, we forget what, what, uh, you know, what language these, these scriptures were written in, man, okay, so the Old Testament was, written in Hebrew, uh, the Paleo Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, which is the holy tongue, is the uh is was is written in Paleo Hebrew, okay? That's the holy tongue. And then you have the New Testament, which was originally written in Hebrew, but then it was translated into Greek uh by by the uh by the Caesar. Okay? Because he wanted uh his his uh uh, uh he wanted it to be known for the for the uh, for the Grecians, okay. So it was originally originally in Hebrew because that's the that's the holy tongue, okay. Just like you have uh, some of the Northern Kingdom, okay. You have where they their 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 native tongue is Spanish, but they can still understand English. You get um, it's kind of uh, well that's that's what it is, man. You know, so the uh, the New Testament was originally written in in, in Hebrew, but then it was translated to Greek. Okay, now all the scriptures are translated to English. All right, so this is why you have your how uh, you, this is why you have the word Jesus, but Jesus has no meaning. Okay, and we're going to bring it out. It says, This is Acts 4 and 10. It says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel. All right, Israel, because the whole book from Genesis to Revelation is a story and a storyline, the past, present, and future of the nation of Israel. Okay. It says by that by that name of Yahweh Shai, okay, Hamashiach, okay, which is Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai is Jesus, and Christ is Hamashiach or the Anointed. All right. It says of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom the heavenly Father raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man uh, stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which should become the head of the corner. You know, when it was prophesied in the Old Testament, uh, you know, and and uh, brought and reiterated in the New Testament that Yahweh Shai 
would be the uh, the corner the cornerstone of the building. Okay, the chief cornerstone. Okay, I think it's Psalms 94. It talks about Yahweh Shai being the, uh, that chief cornerstone. All right, it says, um, neither is there salvation in any other. Right, for there is none other name under heaven given among men where, whereby we must be saved. So we're only saved by one name. Okay, and that name is Yahweh. Who the word ignorantly calls God, all right, and Yahweh Shai, who, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So these are the true names. These are the only names that we're going to be saved by. You, you're not going to be saved calling calling on uh, Jesus Christ, okay? Because there's no such thing as a Jesus. Okay, the Jesus that we that we that we uh, that we read about it was a Hebrew, and he had a Hebrew name. All right. So this is so this is uh, some of the stuff that that we have to have to know. Okay, there's no more praying to Jesus Christ. There's no more praying to God. God has a name. When you when you read, um, um, you know what? Let's go to uh, um, Exodus. Uh, chapter 6. Alright, when you read when you read the scriptures and you see the word Lord in all capital, that's the tetragrammaton YHWH. Alright? Let me you know what? And let's let's get it real quick. Let me let me break it down real quick. Um Okay. This is the ancient Paleo Hebrew uh, alphabet. All right. So when you see the word Lord in all caps, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see uh, it's, it's the tetragrammaton YHWH, which is translated to Yahweh. All right. So we have the uh, Yah. So it's Yah, Ha, Wa, Ha. Yah, Ha, Wa. Okay. That's that's the the name of the heavenly Father. When you see when you see Lord, okay. That's Yahweh. Let, let, let me prove it. All right. First of all, let's go to uh, let's go let let's go to that verse. Uh, Exodus chapter six, and this is a good uh. Website to use Hebrew Old Testament uh, Hebrew Old Testament. This is what I use to try to like uh, use the par parallel. You see, so you have the Assyrian Assyrian script, the modern Hebrew, then you have the ancient ancient Paleo Hebrew. See, it even gives you the date. So you have the modern Hebrew, which is which is what uh, was used now, and this is the the ancient Paleo Hebrew, which was used uh, 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 before 585 BC. Okay. But it was still used. That's what Esau puts. All right. This is what Esau puts. But it was still translated. Uh, it was still being used even after that. Okay. So we're going to go to uh, Exodus 6 and 3. Okay. Uh, you know, 6 and 2. Let's go to 6 and 2. It says, And and God spake unto Moses and saying unto him, I am the Lord. Okay. Now we have different translations. All right. Now this American Standard ESV, the American Standard Version, says I am Jehovah. All right. And then in the Bible, in basic English, it says I am Yahweh. All right. So we got three different uh, translations, right? But this is what it actually is in the Paleo Hebrew, right here. See, and we you read you read the, the ancient Paleo Hebrew from, from right to left. So you have the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, and the Ha. That's the, the that's the Tetragrammaton where you see the word Lord. Whenever you see the word capital L O R D, this is what this is what it, this is what's in the in the scriptures. Okay? Because this is the this is the Paleo Hebrew. This is what the Old Testament was written in. So this is this is Lord in all caps. Wa, um, the, the Yah, the Ha, the Wa, and the Ha. Okay. 
So when we go to um Okay, even though, okay, let's go, let's go to the next verse. It says, so we got the Lord, right? Exodus 6 and 2, and God spake unto Moses, saying unto him, I am the Lord, I am Yahweh, all right? Verse 3, Exodus 6 and verse 3, and I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but my name, here, see, here it is, Jehovah, I was not known unto them. See, so Jehovah, the Jehovah's Witness, you know, bases the whole, uh, doctrine off, off of the word Jehovah. But when you go into the word Jehovah, let's break it down. And then we're going to go back into that uh, into that website where I showed you. And we're going to break down what Jehovah is. Alright? Strong's H3068 Jehovah Jehovah Okay, so you notice that even though it says Jehovah, even in the translation, it says Yehovah. Okay, and we're gonna load, we're gonna go through the, the alphabet, but there's no V's in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Okay, let me go to, to go to it real quick. There's no V's in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. We have the I, everything ends in I, except this letter right here, which is I. Okay, so we have I, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha, Wa, Za, Cha, Ta, Ya, Ka, La, Ma, Na, Sa, I. Pa, Taza, Kwa, Ra, Sha, and Tha, okay? There's no E's in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, okay? There's no um, U's in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Everything ends in the I, except this letter right here, I, okay? So this is how we know that it's not um, the ancient uh, name of, of the Most High, Yahweh, it's not Yahuwah, because there's no U's. In the, in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, okay? So, you see we have uh, Jehovah, okay? And it translates to Lord. How many times? 6,510 times. Okay? So, it says Jehovah. Now we know what Jehovah means. It means Yahweh. Because there's no V's in the, in the Paleo Hebrew. And we're going to break down the letter J, okay, real quick. I don't want to make this lesson too long because I know that Jake's attention, uh, attention span is pretty pretty low, all right? So it says in uh, the proper name of the one true uh, power, okay? So Yahweh is the proper name of the one true power, all right? Now, let's go to, uh, let's go one to when the letter J was invented because Jesus cannot be his name because the, the letter J was not around uh, in in his time, in the Messiah's time, okay? So I typed in when was the letter J invented, and it says that it was invented in 1524. Now we know that prior to this date, the Messiah was walking around, you know, 1500 years before this, all right? So it says, so there's, so there's no way that his name can be Jesus, because J wasn't even here. Um, the, the letter J wasn't invented in in the, uh, in the Messiah's day, in Yahweh Shai's day. All right, it was, the letter J was invented in 1524. And it says both uh, I and J were used interchangeably. All right. So this is why the lowercase J has the little dot. You know, it just has the I part and then the little dot, but it was just the J has, has a, little, a little hook right here, okay? Because why both I and J were used interchangeably by scribes to express the sound of both the vowel and the consonant, the I and, and the J, okay? It wasn't until 1524 when Gian Giorgio Tresino, uh, an, Italian, an Italian Renaissance uh, grammarian, known as the father of the letter J, made a clear distinction between the two sounds, okay? So it, I and J were, were used interchangeably until the 1524 when this guy, Gian G Giorgio Tresino, okay, made a clear distinction between the two sounds. You see? So how could his name be Jesus if G the letter J was just invented uh, what, five, uh, 500 years ago. Okay. So when we have that in mind, we're going to go to 
the 1611, okay? You know what? Let's go here first. Let's go to Matthew. Um, Matthew chapter 1 and 21. And we're going to get it in here. And we're going to read it. And then we're going to go to, to the to the 1611. Okay? So it says, um, uh, uh, Matthew 1 and 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and she is Mary. Okay? Shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, Jesus, okay? We know now we know that the letter J wasn't around. So his name can't be Jesus. And his name is Yahweh Shai. Now, why is the name Yahweh Shai? For he shall save his people from their sins. So Yahweh Shai breaks down to he deliver, okay? Because he or he uh savior. Why? Because that's what name names meant. Names meant something back in our days. Okay, we we just wasn't named, you know, uh, little Mook Mook. All right, we had names that uh, you know, that represented something. You know, what I'm saying Abram's name was changed to Abraham because he was now a father of many nations. That's what Abraham means. Okay, so yeah, uh, so Yahweh Shai means he deliver he's the deliverer yeah he uh how was shy deliver okay that's what how was shy is that's what how was shy means he shall save his people from their sins he shall deliver his people from their sins man because he is our deliverer he's our savior okay now let's go to uh matthew chapter one and verse 21 in the 1611, okay? This is the 1611 right here, all right? Whoops, it's locked in. All right, so now we see that in 16, in the year of 1611, that letter J wasn't, still wasn't uh, being published, even though, uh, I, I exit out of it, but even though the letter J was invented in, in 1524, it wasn't being used or published until into the mid 1600s. Okay, so this is why you, when you when you get a 1611 Bible, you see the same the same verse right here, right here. It says, "And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from the sins." Okay, now let's look at this, this word Jesus. The letter J E S U S. All right. Now we go to the 1611. It says, "And she shall bring forth a son." And now shall call his name. What? What? What is that? Is that a J or is that an I? See, we now we see now we understand where it said that it was used the I and the J was was used interchangeably, okay? Until it was made two different words, and that's why this word is Iesus. There are no Js in the letter in the in the sixteen eleven Bible because the letter J wasn't being published. Because the letter J was only invented uh, less than a hundred years earlier than, than the, uh, when the 1611 was published. This is why the, there's there's no such thing as the as the name Jesus. Okay. So we explained uh, the Lord. Okay. We go down uh, to verse uh, Exodus six and three. Okay. It says, and on the King James, this the King James, okay? It says, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, uh, by the name of God Almighty, but by, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them, okay? So we go, we go up to the to the Paleo Hebrew, and what's the what is the word for Jehovah? Here we go again, Yahweh, Yahweh, not Jehovah. They translated Yahweh. To Jehovah, okay. This is the the true name of the heavenly Father, man, who the word only calls God, Yahweh. Yah He Hawa is exist or to be, because the Most High exists. He is. He is. All right. He is time. He is everything. So Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay. Yahawa. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, okay? 
and then you have Yahweh Shai, which is which is the true name of 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 our Messiah, who the word only calls Jesus Christ. All right, so let's go back to the scriptures, and let's go to uh, Proverbs uh, thirty, and I think it's uh, thirty and verse four. Okay, it says, "Who hath ascended up to, into heaven, or descended, or who uh, who have gathered the wind in his fist, who have bound the waters in a garment?" Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. See? So the scriptures is asking us. Well the most high is asking us. What is his name? What is most high's name? Yahweh. And what is his son's name? Yahweh Shai. If thou canst tell. Because it's, it's going to be hard for people to understand. Okay? This ain't for everybody man. This is not for everybody. You know we do this by faith. You know, Hebrews 11 says, the face of faith, uh, let's, let me get it real quick. Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See? So faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So all of this is by faith, man. Okay? So we walk by faith and not by sight. So this is why we, we search and we try to figure out what the name of the, of the, uh, the father is and what the name of the son is. All right. And it's been revealed that it's Yahweh for the heavenly father and Yahweh Shai for the, uh, for, for the only begotten son. All right. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 18. Let me wrap it up. Um, Proverbs 18 and 10. It says the name of Yahweh is a strong tower okay the righteous running into it and the safe see the name okay what comes along with the what what comes with the name okay the doctrine all right the name of yahweh is a strong tower there's no other there's no other name to be saved by by yahweh and yahweh shai there's power in those in those names you know we've been as christians you know, we've been praying to Jesus and God for centuries and we still at the bottom, man. Okay. We're still at the bottom under for for uh for Yahweh Shai. I mean for uh for Jesus. All right? Because when you when you when you when you type up Jesus, this is what happens. Okay? Let's see Jesus. See this this is see this is Jesus, man. Okay, this is not the savior of the Bible. So when you're praying to Jesus, you're praying to your oppressor, man, because your oppressor gave you this, these images. This is Jesus Christ. Okay, this is Jesus Christ. But the Messiah of the Bible, the savior of Israel, Yahweh Shai is a, is a dark skinned man. With woolly hair, man. Okay. So when you pray to Je when you praying to Jesus, you're praying to this guy right here. There you go, right here. All right. When you praying for a money blessing in Jesus' name, this this is who you are praying to, a blue eyed devil, man. Your oppressor. How is your how how is how is it going to be? How is your oppressor going to be your savior at the same time? Okay, this is this is a false image, man. This is Jesus. Okay, the the savior of the Bible has woolly hair and and skin is uh, burnt brass, man. A dark skin brother. All right. Let me get this off my screen, man. It's making me sick. Um, let's go to Psalms, uh, 45 and 17. All right. Let's start at verse, and we'll start at verse, um, let's start, let's get to the point. As, uh, Psalms 45 and 17, I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. See? So right now, at, in these last days, the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shar are coming, uh, is, is being reestablished on the earth. It's no more slave doctrine, man. It's no more 
uh, slave master is Jesus. All right, and if you don't worship Jesus, you you getting uh, fifteen lashes, man. All right, right now the name is is being remembered in all generations, man. Okay. It says, therefore, shall the people praise thee forever and ever. And that what we're gonna do? We're gonna praise the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever, man. Not God and Jesus. Uh, let's go to uh, Psalm 72. A couple more precepts and we can wrap it up. Uh, Psalm 72 and uh, 17. It says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Okay? It says, Blessed be the Lord God, right? The Lord, it's, remember what I said, and the Lord in all caps is Yahweh. Okay, so blessed be Yahweh God, okay? Or power. The power of Israel who only doeth wonder, wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. You see, so the Most High has a name. Okay? And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So be it and so be it. All right. So, and blessed be his glorious name forever, man. Blessed be Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever, man. Their names. Okay. The names. That's very important. We have to have the names. Um, let's go to... Uh, Real quick, in the Apocrypha, uh, Baruch chapter 2, and let's start at verse 29. It says, If ye would not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned to a small number among the nations where, the, where I was scattered them. All right, and we are, we are. The children of Israel, all right, and it was prophesied as a curse that we'd be scattered if we didn't listen to you. the law, such as the commandments that was given to us by Moses, all right, and we didn't listen, so now we are scattered everywhere, all right, the diaspora, the scattering, okay, that was prophesied in Deuteronomy 28, you know, uh, let's go with that, and I'll break that down later too, it says, for I knew that they would not hear me because it's a stiff-necked people, right? Because we're stiff-necked, man. We don't listen, man. We're the only people that 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 uh that act like animals, man. Okay. That don't want to hear. We 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 scoff against the Bible. Okay. It says, but in the land of their captivities, you know, our scatterings, because when we were scattered, man, we were we were in captivity. They shall remember themselves, and now we're remembering ourselves. Uh, in these last days, okay? Now we're no, we're no more African-American or black, you know what I'm saying, or niggas, or specks, or or, uh, or Native Americans, or Indians, all right? Now we know, we understand that we're the children of Israel, okay? We have an inheritance. We have, uh, we have a, a, a homeland. We have a home. Uh, we have a, a, a language, okay? We have customs. We're remembering ourselves, Okay? In the land of their captivities, okay? For us, for Jake, or for, for the northern kingdom, we were captives. Um, uh, you know, the, the Negroes were, were captives uh, by Esau, the, the, the white Edomites, okay? Then you had, uh, you know, um, uh, Benjamin, you know, uh, captured by, you know, some, some conquistadors and yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? You had Levi con uh, conquered by French, uh, by French Edomites, you know, and then you had the Northern Kingdom. You know, the Northern Kingdom was captured by, captured by uh, you know, um, uh, Spaniards, okay? And that's why they speak French. All right? I mean, it's like, yeah, that's why they speak Spanish. So we're, we're, we're in, in the land of our captivities. The whole 12 tribes is waking up, man. We, we, we're we, we're going to remember ourselves, okay? 
and it says, and I shall, and they shall, and shall know that I am the Lord their power, and I will give them in heart and ears to hear. Okay. It says, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and for us, uh, my well, for myself, um, in the land of North America, when we were captives to the to the Edomites, you know, in hardcore slavery. All right. But this is not. This is just not for me. It's for wherever you're, we, we we are, man. Throughout the four corners of the earth, man. All right. You may be, you know it may be brother in China watching this, man. You know, saying that was in captive that that was uh, captives to the uh, to the to the Moabites, man, the Chinese. All right, during the Silk Road slave trade. Okay, brothers is waking up everywhere, man. Sisters is waking up everywhere. And it's a beautiful thing, man. All right. So it says, they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. And what? And think upon my name. Now we understand the, the true power of, of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, the power in those names. Okay. We're thinking of, we're thinking on the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, not Jesus and God. There's no power in that. All right. And um, I want to, let me... Let me finish this out, man, because I don't want to keep make this really long. Um, let me go to uh, let's go to Psalms forty-four, and let's start at verse eighteen. It says, "Our heart is not turned back; neither have our steps declined from Thy way." Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of, of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. Okay. And that's, that means that this is a dark saying for the place of our captivities. Okay. The shadow of death. When you read Psalms 23, it says that we, we, we're in the valley of the shadow of death. All right. And what does a shadow do? It covers everything, man. Your shadow is everywhere. All right. So this is just a dark saying for our place of captivity. All right. It says... Verse uh, 20, it says, if we have forgotten the name of our power or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not the heavenly father search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. You see? So it says that if we've forgotten the name of our power, man, okay, shall not the heavenly father search this out? The elect are not going to forget the name of the heavenly father, man. You know, we did forget that at a, at a period of time, but now it's, we've, we've been called back through the mercy of the Most High, man. Okay? And Yahweh Shai. Um, let's go to Psalm 22. Um, let's start at verse 22. It says, I will declare thy name unto thy, my brethren. All right. And this is what we're doing right now. Okay. We're declaring Yahweh Bashim Yashai. And Bahashem means in the name. So it's Yahweh. Okay. Which is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Bahashem in the name. Yahweh Shai. Okay. So the Father, I mean, uh, the Father works through his son Yahweh Shai. All right, so it says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. All right, that's what we're doing. We're declaring Yahweh and Yahweh Shah's name unto the children of Israel. It says, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. All right, so we're praising the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, man. All right, ye that fear Yahweh, praise him and all ye the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all ye the, all ye the seed of Israel. All right, so the Israelites will, will, will use and praise the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Okay. And let's go to uh you know what? Forget it. If I don't want to listen, it's all right. Isaiah uh twelve and verse four it says, In that day shall you say, Praise Yahweh, call upon his name, okay? call upon his name. What is the name? Yahweh. All right. And declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Man, we're, we're exalting the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Why? Because those are the true names 
of the Heavenly Father, man. We've we've come out of that slave slave doctrine, man. It's no more Jesus. Okay. None of that. We're we going back to the to the to the old ways. Okay, to so the old past, like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah six and verse sixteen. You know, let me get that real quick. Jeremiah six and sixteen it says, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old path. See, the old path is the ancient Paleo Hebrew. Okay? The true the true the true language, the holy tongue. Okay, our 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 mother tongue, or slacky, our our home tongue isn't English, okay? It's Hebrew. The ancient Paleo Hebrew. Um it says uh, and ask for the old past where, where is the way the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls man so when you when you go to the old past the old ways you'll find rest for your souls all right but they said we will not walk the rent and most people won't walk in the old paths okay because people love this world people don't want to be reborn again people love being Christians and stuff like that and not and not adhering to the doctrine of the Bible that's gonna get them destroyed all right and let's go to uh, uh, Sharak, Ecclesiasticus 17. And verse 9, let's start at verse 9. says, he gave, he gave them glory in his marvelous acts forever that they might declare his works with understanding. So the elect are going to declare his works with understanding. Get that true knowledge and understanding from the spirit, from the spirit of Yahweh Shah in the form of the comforter. Okay. We read uh, John 14 and 26 talks about the comforter teaching us all things. Okay. And the elect will praise his holy name. Okay. The elect shall praise his holy name. Okay. The, the, most people are not going to be able to get his name. All right, most people are going to call him Ahia or Yahuwah or Jehovah or Yahweh, you know, but the elect, the, no, the, and Yahweh Shai, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are only dealing with the elect, okay? And we are going to praise his holy name, okay? It says, beside this, he gave them knowledge, whoo, knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. All right. He gave us he gave us his knowledge, man, to to know what his name is. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it right cut cut it right there. Uh, most high willing this this lesson was edifying. I mean to to the people that's that's just coming in. You know the the names of Yahweh and Yahash and Yahweh Shah are very important, man. And there's power in those names. You have to pray to those names. You know, there's no more praying to Jesus and God. Okay. The real names are Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right. So most how well in this lesson was edifying. I'm going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakadash. I want to say double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. I want to say Kwame Sharala, Baba Ball, Shalom.